Let's take a look at the supplies you're going to need to transfer a mini DV to a digital format. You'll need a computer with a USB port, the Elgato video capture, an RCA cable that has that small 3.5 millimeter male on the end, and a mini DV camera, either the original one you used to record it with, and if you don't have that anymore, you can just get a used one off of eBay or a website like that. The first thing we'll do is we'll plug in that 3.5 into the AV out on your camera. Now every camera is different. This one had it in the back. You just want to look for AV out for that. And then you'll take the white, red, and yellow RCA cables and plug those into the Elgato video capture. After you get that in, you've only got one thing left, and that is putting the Elgato into the USB port on your computer. And here's how it looks when it's all set up. And what I like to do is I like to put all the cords in the back so that they're out of the way and you can have plenty of room when you're ready to start digitizing your tapes. Once we have the setup complete, now we need to download the software that's going to help us convert the video. So let's download the software and then we'll be ready. To download the software, we'll go to elgato.com and then click on downloads on the main page. After you click on downloads, go to the search bar, type in the words video capture, and you'll get the correct download. Right now it's version 2.0.7. It may be a different version if they've updated it. And notice on the right there, you can either do the Mac version or you can do the Windows. Just download the software, follow the directions, and you'll be ready to go. All right, let's start getting some of those mini DV tapes onto your computer. First thing I'm gonna do is go to my launch pad so that I can find the Elgato program. And there it is. If you're using the Windows operating system, it'll be a shortcut on your desktop. And that shortcut will look just like this one here. So we'll click on Elgato and it will open up to this page. First thing we need to do is name our movie. So I'm just going to name this Home Movie 1. Okay, and then you click how long you think it's going to be, and it will tell you how much hard disk space is required. So you see 30 minutes there is 364 megabytes of space. If I change this to a custom amount and do something like, say, 200, then it's 2.4 gig of hard drive space. So it's pretty neat. It tells you how much space that many minutes will take up on your hard drive. So in this example, I'm selecting 120 minutes, but you don't need that much. In fact, it says on most of the tapes right on it that it's 60 minutes long. So what I would recommend is either doing 60 minutes or do a custom amount like 65 or 70 minutes. So you have a little pad in there. So again, that's the time frame you'll want for mini DV tapes. After you select your time, go ahead and hit continue. Okay, now here you have an option for your video input. You have S-Video or RCA. If you remember, we use the RCA cables. There's no S-Video plugged in. So RCA is really the easiest and best way to do this. So we click RCA and then you have an option to do 16 by nine or four by three. And we'll come back and revisit this a little later. Here's a quick tip. These tapes have a safeguard on them. They have this little tab and when you flip that tab up, you can record and when you push it down, it saves the content that's on there so that you can't accidentally record on it. So I recommend switching that down so you don't accidentally record over your home movies. Okay, let's turn the camera on to player mode and most cameras will have that player mode. You'll want it in player and not camera because camera will record over it. And then we'll put the mini DV into the camera, close it up and press play. On this particular camera, the play button is in the handle under a little door. Just open that up and then you can press it. There we go, we've got our movie playing now. And you'll notice when I do 16 by nine, all it does is stretch out your pixels. It just stretches it out. So I suggest going with four by three because it will look the way it did when you filmed it. Unless of course your camera filmed it in 16 by nine, which most of these don't. All right, let's hit continue again. You'll be able to look at your audio levels here. You'll also be able to hear it coming out of the speakers. 
So I notice one of my levels are low, but coming out of the speakers, it sounds just fine. So we're good to go. Okay, we'll hit continue and pop over to this page. And now is the time to get your tape all set up. So rewind it where you want to start the tape, probably at the beginning. You can rewind all the way to the beginning, but get your tape to where you would like to start recording. Then once you have your tape where you want it, we're gonna hit record first on the computer and then we'll hit play on the mini DV camera. And then you'll get the whole thing. Uh, so here's some little home movies of my daughter, Mikkel. If you check this box, it will automatically stop the recording after 120 minutes. And that recording time is based off what you chose at the beginning. So if you chose 30 minutes at the beginning, it'll record 30 minutes before it will stop. And if you did the custom amount that we talked about, 65 minutes, then it will stop recording after 65 minutes, which is pretty nice because then you can just hit record and leave and know that it will stop on its own. And if you click this one, it will mute the sound. That doesn't mute it on the actual source. All it does is mute it so that it's not coming out of your computer speakers. That way you don't have to listen to it the whole time. So if you don't want to hear what's going on and you just want to keep doing some work, hit mute sound and it won't come out of your computers. That mute sound doesn't affect the recording at all. It will only mute the computer speakers. Then once you're done recording, you just have to hit stop recording. And it will bring you to this page. Now there are a couple of things here. There is a play bar, like a scroll bar that will let you scroll through it so you can see what content is in the video and there are these bars down here and what that is is for trimming the video so you can kind of see where your video start is and if you move that at your end point we'll move it right to the beginning of the video right where the video started and on this one we'll move right before i get in the picture we just want mikhail in this video so that's where it will trim it it will trim this amount of space hit continue and you'll get this page. It will say your movie was saved successfully and it will show you where it is. Now this is pretty cool. You can actually click on it and it will open up Finder to the exact spot that your home movie is in. So you can check it out and see how the recording looks. And the Windows operating system works like this too. When you click on the file, it will actually open the file so you can check out your video. So it's really neat. No matter what operating system you're on, whether it's Mac or Windows, Elgato works the same way. Very simple. So let's check this out and see how our video looks. And it looks like it's perfect. It started right where I put my in point and ended right where I put my out point. And that's it. That's all it takes to get on your computer. Now it's on your computer and you can share it with your friends and family.